To talk more about Iraq, we're joined by Juan Cole, professor of history at University of Michigan. His blog and form comment is online at juancole.com. He's the author of many books, including Engaging the Muslim World. His latest book, The New Arabs, How the Millennial Generation is Changing the Middle East, will soon be out. His latest article is headlined, Don't Trust the Bombers on Iraq. Shock and Awe Never Works. Uh, welcome to Democracy Now!, Professor Cole. Can you start off by talking about President Obama saying he is deploying 275 U.S. military personnel back to Iraq. What about uh, what is happening there today and what you feel the U.S. role should be? Well, the way in which the Iraqi security forces uh, collapsed in Mosul and elsewhere in the north of Iraq uh, has clearly raised concerns in the U.S. government as to the safety of the personnel at the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. Given the long history of crises uh, in the modern Middle East uh, from the 1979 hostage crisis in Tehran to the attack on the consulate at Benghazi, uh, there's real concern uh, that the U.S. Embassy in uh, the Green Zone in Baghdad may, may not be secure. Uh, it's the responsibility of the local government to provide that security, but obviously there are some questions about whether it can and will. And Juan Cole, how would you characterize this conflict right now? Uh, when we talk about ISIS, it's, it's, it's generally referred to as this, monolith, as this monolithic force. But of course, there are many militant groups that comprise this uh, pushback against the Iraqi government. So your assessment of the overall picture right now? I don't believe that uh, we can think about the, what has happened in Iraq as a series of military conquests. Uh, the uh, Islamic State of Iraq and Syria is a small group, uh, a few uh, thousand fighters, uh, doesn't have formations or brigades. Uh, and uh, I think what really happened was that they have cells on the ground in the Sunni Arab cities, and they coordinated with other groups, including secular uh, and, and uh, socialist uh, groups like Exbathis, uh, to stage uh, urban uprisings against uh, the al-Maliki regime and its security forces. So uh, I think that this is a very complex uh, phenomenon and, and an expression of popular uh, uh, discontent and not, not just a series of military uh, advances. Explain, Professor Cole, who the forces are. Who is ISIS? Who is ISIL? Uh, where does al-Qaeda fit into all of this? Well, the, the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria is also called the Islamic State uh, of Iraq and the Levant in English. It's just a matter of how you translate one of the words. Uh, so they're the same organization. Their uh, uh, genealogy is in uh, the Islamic State of Iraq, which was uh, the main al-Qaeda vehicle. Uh, uh, initially founded by a Jordanian uh, named Zarqawi, uh, and uh, it has been active in, uh, in the Sunni Arab areas of Iraq and in bombing the Shiite areas uh, all along since uh, 2005 or so uh, in a big way. And so, you know, when we hear uh, news reports of it, of it uh, advancing in Bakuba, well, you could have gone back uh, six or seven years and the same thing would have been true. Uh, so th it is a, an al-Qaeda affiliate, although recently uh, the, the core al-Qaeda has d displayed discomfort with it because it attacks other al-Qaeda affiliates. So uh, it, it doesn't play well with other children. It's an extremely nasty organization. It blows up soft targets, children at ice cream shops. Um, it'll blow up a marriage and then come back and blow up the funeral that evening. Uh, it, it, it's, it's ruthless. Uh, and uh, uh, it's, it's the worst of the, uh, of, of the, of the Sunni uh, resistance groups. But it, it does uh, represent a, a, a set of discontents within the Sunni Arab areas of northern Iraq, where the Sunnis are something like 20 percent of the Iraqi population. They were uh, in power before the, the U.S. invaded in 2003, uh, and they've been uh, th dethroned and uh, made unemployed and uh, marginalized, and uh, so there's uh, various kinds of discontent, civil uh, and demonstrations, but also a turn to terrorism. Well, Wankel, on the issue of Sunni grievances, can you explain what the government of Nouri al-Maliki has done to uh, fuel sectarianism? And now, of course, as it's uh, called upon to form a more inclusive government, what it could do now? 
Well, al-Maliki, you know, was a conspirator. For 20 years, he was the uh, bureau chief of the covert uh, Dawa or Islamic call party, uh, which is a Shiite fundamentalist group aiming for a Shiite uh, uh, government, you know, a Muslim uh, fundamentalist government in Iraq. And uh, so when he became prime minister, uh, you know, he, he just continued to be a conspirator and, and doesn't trust uh, the Sunni Arabs, uh, who, who dis were disproportionately powerful in the Ba'ath Party, that he was trying to overthrow. Uh, he doesn't meet with his uh, Sunni Arab uh, po political uh, uh, partners uh, when he had any. Uh, and he, his government uh, doesn't provide much in the way of services to the Sunni Arab cities. Uh, uh, they, they don't share in, in the oil wealth. Uh, they don't have uh, regular electricity. They don't have services. Uh, and uh, they were fired from their government jobs in favor of uh, Shiite cronies of the, of the ruling Shiite parties with something called debathification on the model of uh, denazification in post-war Germany. But it went way beyond even what denazification did in Germany. So even high school teachers were fired and so forth. You have unemployment, you, you have a lack of investment, you have a lack of services, and uh, the Sunni Arabs in, in parliament are given the uh, the message that, you know, they are a minority in Parliament, and, and they're always going to be a minority in Parliament, and they're always going to lose every vote in Parliament from here on into eternity. So they're just not going to put up with that anymore.